Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All righty, folks, we're back with you. We're always tickled to have Gary Chapman, singer-songwriter, on with us all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Good morning, sunshine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, we're just hanging in here, man. There's just so much going on. We're just at the point where we're just laughing about it. I mean, what do you do? It's just like, okay, here we go. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go. I'm with you on that. Not yeah, that's funny. We had Reno on the other day, you know, when your name came up, and he's like, "You are." He is the most positive guy in the world right now. He's like, "Bring it on, good Lord's fixing to take care of everything." And and he, I thought yeah, he's right. I mean, you're never down and out about this, and I'm like freaking well, you know out. What? It's either it's either true or it's not. You know, I mean, the, the truth doesn't change just because things get weird. It doesn't. <laughs> so. I don't know, man. We got all the truckers going on up there. We had a uh, Ed was telling what was the deal with the gas cans. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. Well, the was mayor or, or the the mayor or the police chief in Ottawa said anybody carrying a gas can would be arrested, and something like two thousand people showed up with empty gas cans walking around Ottawa. I yeah, those thought, videos are hilarious. They're they're just lined up walking around with gas cans. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the thing about I tell you it, what, you, you when you start messing with a with a with a with a, uh, a a smart kind of common sense guy's mind, you're opening up a can of worms that that the the academic world cannot compete with. They're just going to be smarter. They they they've had to figure things out and not be told. Right. They just figure things out. But you know that's the thing about it. They're up there talking about how they're hurting the economy and and everybody's talking about that. And I thought, well, what the heck? You know, the government has cut da- shut down more businesses than any trucker has ever even thought about yeah they've shut they've shut down you know a few bridges and and a city uh at worst for what a week and a half two weeks whatever the heck it is now right how does that compare with two years i mean honestly of the whole world yeah look at the damage they've done (laughs) to our kids i know these truck drivers aren't doing any damage to our kids these truck drivers are actually uniting i thought it was hilarious watching all the kids out there supporting the truck drivers Well, I thought it was hilarious. Well, they they called. A, they definitely opened a can with the with the kid issue because now they're, you know, they're they're threatening to go in there and, and take those kids because you know they're they're endangered, right? Right. Now the moms of Canada are saying if you touch a child, you're going to have so many minivans full of soccer moms descending on your face. Oh. It's gonna freak you out and a whole I, lot more than the truckers. Right? I'd rather be attacked. I'd rather be attacked by the SWAT team as I think is a van full of oh, angry moms. <laughs> angry moms. Not not a nice group to have to contend with. Oh man, I'm just ready for the yeah. America to get in the there. SWAT, I mean, the, SWAT, the SWAT team will know when to stop. <laughs> moms won't. But did you see the headlines this morning that uh, Biden has already put uh, DH? Was it Department of Homeland Security on alert for the possibility of convoys in the United States? And I'm thinking, wait a minute, when did that become illegal? When did a convoy become illegal? These men it are. It used to be a great clone. Yeah, yeah, these men and these women, they're standing up for our freedom. And so you're going to sick Homeland Security on them? That's ridiculous. Yeah. I didn't see any of this in St. Louis or Baltimore, or any of the places where they were burning police stations down yeah. in federal court buildings. You know, yep. Every, yep. You, know, you can't have your cake and eat it too there, Joe. Well, you know, that's the thing about it. <clears throat> These people have attacked in businesses, private businesses, burn them to the ground, protesting, yep. and they're okay with that. But then now that you've got these truckers up here that shut down the cities, you know, that's just like the insurrection up there at the uh, Capitol. Uh, insurrection. What the heck am I talking about? Where they go in the protest of the Trump rally. And, yep. I mean, that – you know, of course, I sent you that video, and then you sent me that thing back. That is amazing to me if you look at the real deal other than what the the, the uh, news media is putting out there about how bad everybody was. But, I mean, it is actually – if you could watch that, and I've seen it and I've talked about it. I can't remember the name of it now. but uh, I was at the Olympia on January um, – or on the 6th, and I have to tell you something. There was – I believe there was well over a million people there. And, you know, everybody was getting along. Every group was getting along. Mm-hmm. The police officers couldn't have been nicer and more helpful. It was so peaceful. But you just got this idea or this feeling they're going to try to pull something. And sure as they could, they, they did. They waited for Donald Trump. I don't even think they waited for a speech to end. They didn't. Before they no, started they the uprising. Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, no, all these not. people that were there, these millions of people that were there, all looking at each other going, what What are they talking about? What's mm-hmm. the media talking about? We had a great time. Everybody was peaceful and, and got along with law enforcement. So we're not really sure what they were even talking about. Well, I think it was set up. It's, yeah. it's all it's all just a it's a manufactured story. It yeah. is. I mean, Absolutely. We'll see. Again, you can't stop the truth. You can't. You can dance around it. You can make up all kinds of crap. You can lie. You can you can do it. Eventually, the truth will win. Yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm with you. How's everything in Nashville going, brother? Everything good? Man, it's amazing. Today it's supposed to hit 70 degrees. I'm going to just walk around in a speedo all day. I'm so happy that it's warm a little bit. I'm glad it's still below. Maybe I won't, maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll rethink that. I'm glad it's still below 50 right now when you're on the radio with us and not in your speedo. Because <laughs> the the boxers with the hearts on them are bad enough. Oh, I just don't want to. Yeah, they are. That's a memory they, I don't want. They say something. Here, it's almost Valentine's Day, so, you know. Hey, that's, that's hey, I've it, got man. a song that I'm going to send you that you need to play on Valentine's Day. All right, we'll do it, brother. Yeah. Hey, I, Gary. I wrote this for my wife and, and, and it's going to really touch your heart. Hey Gary, I got a question for you, man. What's what pickup <laughs> line did you use on your wife? Uh, let's see. So Which we, one? <laughs> Just g- give us your uh, best <laughs> shot, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a long story. We should, we should dedicate a show to the story of my wife and I meeting. Right. She was, uh, she was a, a model, a swimsuit model. I'm just throwing that out there that my wife was a swimsuit model. I mean, yeah. that's oh, she a... still is. And um, for me, no, the uh, she was down in the Bahamas shooting uh, for a calendar, the Hooters calendar. Thank you very much. There you go. And my little production company got hired to capture the making of right. said calendar. And I made a rule with myself. You know, there's nothing good that can come here. I was, I was between marriages at the time and, and I just, I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm no, no is the answer to all the questions that come through in my mind. Every time another crop of 20 or 30 girls comes in every three or four days down there, I was down there for a couple of weeks and I was fine. I stuck to it until I saw her, the new crop came in and she literally came skipping down the dock right. to the, the the ship that I was staying on, and dang it, she was just so happy. They, it wasn't about her being gorgeous, which she is. She was just so happy, right? And we laughed and talked for four or five days, and I was, I actually stuck to my guns. There was there was no hanky or panky. Right. We just we just became really really good friends. I cannot remember the first thing I said to her. It's probably. I'll make it up though, and I'll be ready the next time the story comes. <laughs> I will have a line for the next time. Oh, 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 and did I mention she's a swimsuit model? Oh yeah. <laughs> did, I mention my shirt? did you hear Steven's pickup for, line for Hooters? Yeah. Did, what was did you hear Steven's pickup line? Steven, give us your pickup line. Get in the truck. Oh, that's good. That's hey, good. Gary, the reason why I asked, man, we got a contest going on right now, and I got to throw this out there because we are currently taking submissions for this is your last chance to do it. We've got about 10 minutes for you to get your pickup line into our WJRB radio app. Go to the Google Play Store or the App Store, download the app, and send us a corny pickup line. Automatically get your name into the hat. We're going to read them all here in just a few minutes. And you can win $195.10 and, and also a night stay at the Hellendorf in Helen. you got about 10 minutes left. We'll give you one more chance to get those in. You know, that's funny you well, said. I'm glad, I'm glad I couldn't remember mine. Then I, I was ineligible anyway. I'm almost an employee there now. So yeah, you're getting close. I couldn't actually do it. That's funny you said which wife. Because Ed, he actually keeps up with his memory through his ex-wives. Because we'll ask him a question. He was like, <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Now, which wife was I married to at that time? And that's why he relates to... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I can only understand. Yeah. That's all I can do. Yeah. Hey, I put more lawyers' kids through college than I care to think of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's all good now, man. No doubt about it. And you do have a sweet It life. is, actually. Yeah. My, my, uh, my most painful divorce has turned into the most beautiful story of forgiveness and redemption that I'm aware of. Right. And I did not see it coming. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I got just enough redneck in me to go, okay, I can move on. I can move on, but I ain't forgetting. Yeah. And I ain't getting over it. Right. And I did that for a couple of decades. 
and literally God, it would not have been more, more literal had he taken his fabulous hand and just bang, smacked me in the back of the head mm -hmm. and said, you've got to forgive. Yeah. And that's a big deal. And, I man. Did. Yeah. and it has turned into the most amazing thing. It's, it's hilarious now. It's hilarious. Right. And that, that, you know, I, I don't see how you do it and, and, but I'll have to hats off to you for it. No doubt about it. And I know now you and Vince and all y'all, I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all are good now. I mean, well, that's the, that's the weird part. I mean, my, my, uh, my wife and I, uh, ex-wife, first wife, Amy, uh, we got over it quickly a year or so. She came and said, you know, I'm sorry. Um, we had three little kids and there was, there was no, there was no point in perpetuating that side of the bitterness right. <laughs> but, and and we we but i did not i did not do that with him right. and i justified my unforgiveness with the completely irrelevant fact that he had never asked me for it right and uh and god changed my mind mm -hmm. and so i i made the move and and um and it's beautiful right. it's absolutely beautiful we laugh and you know when we all get together now it's so funny or when he and I run into each other, you know, out and about around town, it used to be so weird. Oh, I can imagine. And now it's weird because people can't understand why we're laughing with each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Gary, let's jump to a break. I didn't want to get into all this seriousness stuff. I want to. I want a Willie. I want a Willie Nelson story. Last time you was on, you said you had a Willie story, and then I sent you a thing. I and got you that. Said, you said which I one? So let's take a short break. We're going to think if that's okay today. Sure. All righty, folks, we're back with you, and we're talking to Mr. Gary Chapman, singer-songwriter. Y'all need to go check him out on his Facebook page and the whole nine yards going on with that. And I was just thinking, you was talking about that divorce, man. I've got a cousin that divorced his wife, and, I mean, it was nasty. They never, they don't speak to each other at this time. I mean, they don't. They hate each mm. other. And it makes it really inconvenient at the uh, family reunions because they, they stay yeah. cousins. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awkward for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we get a Willie story. Where's he at? Put him on the screen. I can't see him. Yeah, I was wondering why you guys aren't looking at me. There you go. There you go. He had. He had, we don't look at. We don't look at Gary. I can't see y'all either, but I don't care. I don't. I don't really want to see you. Yeah, I don't blame you a bit. Tell, okay, everybody that's not that's not heard you yet on the radio. Tell them a little bit about your history. I mean, all the stuff you was involved in and 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 with the uh, TV and all that, where they'll know where all these stories and stuff's coming from. Well, I. I uh, uh, one one piece of my life, uh, like I messed with people's ears for a lot of my life with music, and then I got an opportunity to 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 host a television show on if if people are, are still breathing and remember the Nashville Network, uh, it used to be a big deal, and and I got a chance to host their nightly talk variety show, and so I did it for uh, for a few years, and and uh, you know I'd already been in town a long long time and and. Honestly, I, I, I've been in town now 45 years, and uh, and I haven't pissed off anybody that didn't have it coming. Yeah. So those relationships have value, and um, and it and it it proved out in in that setting. So yeah, the if you were in town and and you were uh, claiming to be a country music artist, you were on the show. Right. Period. And you got to meet everybody, yeah. and you know oh, everybody. Yeah. I well. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, sadly, they, they know me. Yeah. No, um, it, 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 I do love that part of Nashville. Right. It's, uh, it's not as much that way these days as it used to be, but it is still amazing. Yeah. It's still a great community. So, yeah, a Willie, the ones that scared me were uh, the legend artists that I grew up in. I grew up in Texas, had a little band, right. you know, in high school. And we, man, we sang Willie songs and Johnny Rodriguez and, you know, we rode our thumb to Mexico, and and uh, so when <clears throat> when Willie came on the show, it it was a giant deal for me. I was I was actually nervous, I starstruck, mm -hmm. and uh, and we know you know it's going to be a huge audience because he just didn't do things like that very often back then, uh, and he was going to be there for the whole hour. So one of my rules was that I, I, I insisted on sitting down myself and having a conversation with everybody that was going to be on camera because I didn't want it to feel, I wanted it to be more like a continuation of a conversation rather than the initiation of a conversation. Right. And it, um, so I'm on the day Willie was supposed to be there the whole hour, I'm sitting here and I can see his tour bus in, out in the parking lot. 
through the window in my office and and I'm, and I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, is he going to come in? Is he going to come in, you know, get makeup or something? When am I going to get a chance to talk to Willie? They're like, he's, he's on the bus. So okay, whatever, whatever. And I see all day a parade of legends right. that are coming to see Willie, you know, cause he's in town and they're all out there. There's little Jimmy Dickens hopping up on the bus and here it comes, you know, here's up oh, there. Oh my gosh. There's, I mean, it's, yeah. The, Ray Price, there he is. It's just legend after legend, and and I'm not an idiot. I know what's happening. Yeah, I was I was at that moment, and thankfully now totally drug free. Right. Uh, and and I but I'm not an idiot. I know, right? Right. Because he's Willie. Well, about 20 minutes before the show, they said, "Okay, Willie, Willie wants to see you on the bus," and I'm like, "Okay, okay." I'm fully dressed, makeup, everything. I'm, I'm ready. I go out on the bus and man, I open the door on this bus and there's a, it's a blue haze. It's there's, there's 10 guys on this bus and they're all doing what you expect them to be doing on Willie's bus. Oh yeah. He's, he's sitting at the front lounge table and I walked over and sat down at the table. <laughs> he didn't say a word, but he had a, he had a, he had a joint about, I don't know if you can see this. Oh yeah. That's not my middle finger, right. but I could do that. Cause that's bigger. Yeah. Trust me. It was large. <clears throat> and he fired that thing up and took a big, long pull off of it. And he hands it across the table and says, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you do? What do you do? Um, you know, yeah. what, what do you do? Talk about when in Rome and, but I knew I knew my job. I know why I'm here. I know what I'm doing. And I know I don't want to do that. Right. Especially going on TV in 20 minutes. moment for danger. <laughs> and, well, uh, I, I promise you, as God is my witness, I did I did my very best Bill Clinton. Right. I did not inhale. Okay. I was like, no, <laughs> no. But, I, but having done it before, I could, I could pull it off. I could make it, mm-hmm. you know, I could make it. There you go. And I did. Yeah. And then I walked back in. He's like, okay, it's going to be a great show. Look forward to it, man. I go back in and it's time to go now. It's time to do the show. Right. And there's a, there's a, a full length, you know, a floor to ceiling mirror. So last thing I see before I walk out, it's, I call it my booger mirror, right? right. We're going to check and make sure everything's cool. And, and I looked in that mirror and my eyes caught my eyes <laughs> and it was like, oh, God, yep. I am so high. <laughs> I'm, I'm ridiculously high from being there, from being on that bus. <clears throat> I look over, I panicked. I panicked, imagine that. I looked over my shoulder and I could see there was a little window uh, through, through the set that I could see part of the band and the bass player, old friend of mine, Daniel Lannerty, solid Christian guy, right? Right. And, and I, I was like, Danny, come here, come here. Danny, come. He comes over. I said, dude, I'm about to go out in front of 2 million people and I am high. I need you to pray for me. It was all I could think of. It's like, okay, God, make me straight. Make me straight. Make me straight. Okay. He answered my prayer, but it took him about an hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, I walked out and, and, uh, I wasn't doing a monologue that night. I was opening it with a song. I wanted to do my tribute to Willie, right? Right. Because I did grow up with his music and loved him dearly, still do. Um, so the the lyric was on the teleprompter. So I was okay. I can do this. All I got to do is say, "We'll be right back." Willie's going to be with us for the whole hour after I finish singing, and I did that. Right. I don't remember any of the rest of the show at all. None. Zero. Yeah. I can't find a copy of it anywhere. I'm dying to see this show. I'm, I'm, I don't, I literally don't remember any of it. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to Google but, it. I'm going to dig it up. his manager came up to me, Willie's manager, longtime guy, uh, came up to me after that show. And I was starting to, the fog was beginning to lift. I could recognize humans at that point. Right. And, uh, and he walked up and he said, man, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know, but that was by far the best interview that Willie Nelson has ever given in his life. 
apparently we just got out there and riffed. Yeah. We just went after it. Oh man. And uh yeah. I gotta I, see I've that. got another one that ends with it with me and a with a cheeseburger on my chest, uh waking up alone on a tour bus, but that's another day. That's another <laughs> okay, day. we'll do that. We'll get you back on that one, man. I'll guarantee it. I'm, I'm still yeah. trying to picture little Jimmy Dickens getting oh. high on the bus with Willie. I'm sorry. <laughs> This is very funny. This this it's very funny. Sorry uh, if that offends anybody, but you know. Well, they say that I'll never smoke boys. weed with Willie again. What's that? Who who did that song? That was Toby. Yeah, I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. So that's a true story. That's yeah. an absolute true story. Yeah, he didn't make any of that up. That's you can't story. make that kind of stuff up, man. They're Dude, just. I'll, I'll give you the synop the the short version of the cheeseburger story. Yeah. I I met a. Uh, uh, a bunch of people, a production crew that I was working with uh, at a house out on Willie's golf course in Perdinales. And uh, we were all having breakfast before we started to work. We're going to work for three days, capturing a bunch of content. It's going to be fun, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And Willie decided we needed to, to, to shoot pool. So we're going to have an eight ball tournament, right? Right. That was on a Monday morning, nine o'clock. Bright eyed, bushy tailed, off we go to work. Wednesday afternoon is when I woke up with that cheeseburger on my chest. <laughs> and I don't remember anything in between. Oh, right my now. Lord. And it's probably That's a good thing you don't, man. It's probably a good thing. I'm just you telling you, this is not, this is not weed like weed, no weed. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's really He's got people that send him the very best from the planet. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've heard yeah. stories, man, but I love them. I love every one of them. I don't plan to ever do it again. I'll tell you that. I just don't. I, I can't afford to lose the time. The, the older you get, the more valuable time gets. Oh, I know. And you know, like, it always was, but you don't recognize it. And yeah, I'm not. I'm not giving three days to anything. And you wonder whose cheeseburger that prayer, was. Prayer <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, Gary. We got to get to break, man. Always great talking to you, brother. I ain't no doubt. And we need more stories. We need more stories from Gary Chapman. That's going to be it. Right? I, have, I, I appear to be a plethora of them. There ain't no doubt. We so. need more laughter in this world. And we <laughs> love when you're on because we get it. We get it. Hey. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.